Hey guys, what's up? It's Alan. Welcome to our planet. And today I'm doing a really, really special video. Obviously, you can see that I'm not in my usual location. I'm actually in Abu Dhabi, UAE. I am a bi-coastal person. I live in Abu Dhabi and I live in Manila at the same time. I travel from both cities from time to time. And I've lived like this for the past five years now, I think, ever since I moved to Manila for college. As soon as I graduated, I had to come back here. So most of my time is spent here already in Abu Dhabi. But I still do go back to Manila. Obviously, you can see that I shoot videos and stuff like that so that you guys could enjoy the true content that we're trying to post and share here. But today, we're gonna try something different. We're gonna open a new chapter through my YouTube channel. You could actually see that there are three flags on there. The UAE flag, the Philippine flag, and the South Korean flag. I've always planned this before that I would touch on all of those three flags because those are the flags that are closest to my heart. I grew up here in the Middle East actually. As soon as I was born, I lived in the Philippines for a few months and then I think on my 11th month, I'm not sure, I moved to Bahrain and I lived there for about seven years. After that, I studied in the States, and after studying in the States, I moved to the UAE. After moving to the UAE, I stayed here until high school, and then I graduated, I moved to the Philippines. So that was basically the route of my life. I went back and forth to Manila as well. It's because of this that I've been able to experience different cultures and see different places and do different things. But one of the things that strikes me the most is how, although many Filipinos do have relatives here in the Middle East, Many of them don't realize how different life is from how it's portrayed in the news in the Philippines. I'm not saying that what the OFWs experience here aren't true because there are certain stories, but we won't touch on that here in this video. Many Filipinos don't get to see that there are actually a lot of happy families here. I know a lot of families who moved to the Philippines and decided to move back here after moving back to the Philippines in less than a year because surprisingly they do indeed prefer living here. The comforts here in the Middle East, the way of life, a lot of things aren't touched on media in the Philippines. Whenever you say Middle East in the Philippines, either the Western concept comes to mind or the Filipino OFW Balikbayan concept. And I'm not saying that those aren't true. Uh, somehow they are true but then not everyone really experiences all of those things. The fact that there are over 28 Filipino schools in all the countries that will be featured on this video speaks a lot. And here in the UAE alone, a single Filipino school has at least a thousand students. There's just so much Filipinos here that we actually amount to about 5% of the population and that's UAE alone and obviously there are a lot of other countries in the Middle East. There's a lot of Middle Eastern countries that I think the Filipinos don't realize. I mean they know that it's there but they're not sure if it's a country or a city. For some reason Filipinos aren't really aware of the geography of the Middle East even if they have a lot of relatives who do live here. Another thing that we will be touching on is the stereotypes in the Middle East are coming from the Middle East, living in the Middle East. Are they true? Are they not? All my friends will be answering that. I met these people in the Philippines, some through friends of friends. So I hope that you guys understand this video with an open mind because there's so much things that you can learn and so much things that you can realize. And I hope that you can see that through this video. Introduce yourself. Where did you live before moving to the Philippines? How long have you lived there? And where do you live now? My name is Wendell. Tumira ako sa Qatar before mga 2011 to 2012. Actually, for a year and a half, my dad, my family sponsorship siya. So, dinala niya kami ng mom ko sa Qatar. After a year and a half, tumira na ako dito ulit. Noong 2013, niin para niya akin. Hi, I'm Nika, as in Veronica. I'm from Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, and I've lived there for 12 years. I've just been back here 2014. So, I'm from Sampaloc, Manila because I study in USD. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm 20 and I came from Saudi Arabia. I lived in this small town called Al Qamar. Um, it's very far from the capital, which was Riyadh. I lived there for almost my whole life and I only came here in the Philippines for college. Right now, I live in Ertigas Classic. I'm currently working. Uh, my name is Andrew. I am 22. I lived in Bahrain for a majority of my life. We actually migrated back in February of 2006. And then I left for the Philippines back in September 28, 2014. Now I currently live in Cainta. I'm actually bouncing with Cainta, Marikina, and Pertigas. 
I'm Noor. I lived in Qatar for eight years before I went back to the Philippines to study. And currently, I live in Quezon City. What are the Filipinos' main misconceptions about the country you lived in? Ang akala nila puro desierto. Pero sa Qatar naman, marami namang mga building. Sabi rin nila, sobrang init. Hindi nila alam, pag winter, sobra namang lamig. Yung iba, sabi nila parang delikado daw. Kasi ngayon, yung recently, di ba yung Qatar, may ano sila with Saudi. Madami. Yung common misconceptions is, usually when kasama ko yung mga relatives ko, may pinsan ko, nung nalaman nilang mag-move ako sa Qatar, sabi nila na, uy, ingatan mo yung Ano mo, <laughs> pwede mo sabihin yun. Ingatan ko daw yung, yung butt ko <laughs> kasi baka anuin ako ng mga jano ganun. Yung sobrang bastos tapos sinasabi nila na camels daw ang ginagamit nyo pang punta from one place to another, di ba? So weird. Yung mga classmates ko, they asked me if I've seen a camel. Of course, I have. Um, I think anywhere in the Middle East, but only along the desert. So they asked if they have buildings there. Yes, lots of buildings. Uh, I live in a Abu Dhabi, okay? And they don't know where Abu Dhabi is. Oh, okay, do you know Dubai? Ayon. They don't know Abu Dhabi. I'm what? Gosh, Abu Dhabi is That's all they think about. They always think about that it's just sand or Arabs or just fires and camels and stuff. But it's actually not it. We're actually more developed than the Philippines. Oh my god. I have so many. One would be that we ride camels to school <laughs> or to go everywhere else. And that a lot of people probably just think that Saudi Arabia is just one whole massive land of just pure desert and that there are no buildings, but that's not the case. There are skyscrapers, there are awesome buildings to see. It's a very well-developed country. I don't know if this is a misconception, but there is a slight hint of gender discrimination in Saudi Arabia. Although we are progressing a bit now, women can drive. We don't even have to wear the abayas anymore, which is pretty cool. It's always in the process of like moving forward and progressing. And right now I feel like Saudi Arabia is making a very liberal move. Why did you move to the Philippines? Was it you or your parents who decided to make you move here? Basically, I moved here because I had to study college and it was my decision because I know that we couldn't afford paying college there in Abu Dhabi, which is a lot more expensive. My parents, naman, actually, my mom wanted me to be there, but I, I was pleading like, Mom, I have to go. I have to. That's the reason why you wanted to go here. Well, um, I wanted to experience something new. I discovered then that this place really is out of my comfort zone, so there. It was my parents kasi mahal college sa Qatar. They decided na sa Philippines lang ako mag-aral. Yun yung decision ng dad ko eh. Kasi college dun medyo mahirap kasi mahal. Ayoko talaga unang lumipat dito. Gusto ko mag-aral sa CNAQ College of North Atlantic, Qatar. Pero mahal talaga. So ayun, dito na ako nag-aral sa UNP. A little bit of both. I came here because obviously my parents would want me to sink my feet in the Filipino culture, the tradition. But mostly because well, college. I think it's a common thing that if you live in Saudi Arabia or if you live in the Middle East for a really long time to take your studies there, for college, you're kind of bound to go back to your country. It's not an obligation to because, well, you're Filipino, you one of these days you have to come back. But no, actually, the education here is really good. I studied in UANP and it's actually really the best four years of my life because I learned a lot. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for that. I actually forced them. They wanted me to study there, they wanted me to take up uni there, but then I told them that wala akong may experience dun eh. Where I came from is actually really small. It's about the same size as NCR and it's a routine life. So I wanted something different. I wanted to experience life. I wanted to experience what they have here. And I had to go with their terms. So I had to take up my senior high school before I actually came here to study. What were the thoughts going through your head prior to you moving to the Philippines? At first, kinakabahan ako kasi new environment, tapos hindi ako sanay mag-aral dito, hindi ako sanay mag-commute. Yung mga lugar, hindi ko rin kabisado. Minsan, napaparanoid ako pag nagpo-commute ako, baka mama, biglang may hold up -er. That time, I was really decided to move here. So I was like having these strong thoughts that, okay, I'm gonna take this as a challenge. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna discover new things. And then when I actually went here, well, that's another question. Medyo nalungkot ako 
kasi I was actually having a good life in Qatar. I have really good friends and make a relation ako noon na hindi Pilipino. Basta things were going smoothly for me. But then my parents wanted me to move back here. So I was sort of devastated. But then it took me some time na I accepted it na lang. Honestly, I thought of it as very nerve-wracking. It's a familiar place, but I spent my whole life in Saudi Arabia and being somewhere that you're not very used to is kind of a really scary thing. First of all, you won't know anyone. And that was actually one of my problems as soon as I came here, as soon as I entered college. Everyone knew everyone except me. That was where I kind of felt kind of lost. But then I found my way back. <laughs> I remember this one time when I went to USD and I didn't know how much the fare was, so I literally just gave out 50 pesos. And hindi ko alam na miso kli pala. So I was just staring blankly at the driver and we just didn't talk. Based on your experience, how different is the life in the country you've lived in versus the Philippines? Did anything reverse culture shock you? My life in Abu Dhabi was basically a lot easier. Life is more comfy there with faster internet, faster services, air-conditioned rooms, which is apparently not that here. No offense. Everything's more high-tech and updated. And then meanwhile, here in the Philippines, um, life was a bit harder. It was so hard for me because I grew up having like all these comfy things. For example, air conditioners. Everywhere you go here, you always sweat. The toiletries here are so different. You expect that you go to a restroom to be clean, but you go to a restroom and it's dirty. On my first two years here, I was very depressed and homesick because I couldn't find myself being at home here. But uh, eventually, like I was able to cope up, I was able to realize that, hey, it's not so bad and there are still fun things around here. Nakapaggala ako dito and ang daming places to go and I enjoy that. Sa Qatar, sanay ako nakikita yung mga tao, yung damit nila, conservative, tapos pagdating dito, yung iba, halos kita na yung kaliluha. <laughs> yung comfort, kasi mas comfortable yung sa Qatar, like yung mga CR, lahat may bidet, dito, yung ibang CR, wala pang tissue <laughs> or sabon. <laughs> This means wala pang tubig. <laughs> to be honest, it's much easier there in Qatar kasi things are more uh, affordable, like for starters, like gasoline. I'm not so sure, if I'm not mistaken, that time it was around 5 one Qatar real, it can reach a one liter na for gasoline and then from the place where I live in, in Qatar, Mesaid, magkadikit la, talaga yung mga bahay and yung mga accommodation so talagang accessible yung mga friends mo like hey guys wanna go out so mabilis kaming magkita tapos labas lang here, compared here naman dito mas mayroon kasi mas malayo yung mga lugar but then compared here to there naman dito mas marami kang pwedeng gawin guys sa Qatar kasi 10 o'clock hindi ka na pwedeng lumabas Why is there a time limit? Very strict yung police dun eh. Pero they're not really gonna arrest you, but may mga police na nag-circle around dun sa lugar. If they see you, they're gonna stop and they're gonna ask, why are you still walking around? It's 10 o'clock. And they're gonna ask for your Qatar ID. For minors ba? For minors. Prior to moving to Qatar in 2011, nakandito na ako natira sa Philippines to begin with. Mabilis naman ako mag-adjust. Surprisingly, nung nag na ako dito sa UANP, ang accepting ng mga tao ay nababayit nila. Inexpect ko rin naman dun sa Qatar, sa international school siya. I assume na since iba-ibang culture, mas accepting sila kasi nga iba-ibang tao. Pero nung first time kong nag-aaral dun, culture shock ako kasi medyo babaw yung mga pag-iisip ng mga tao. Yun yung experience ko. For One, I will have to admit, where I lived in Saudi Arabia, one, you can't drink alcohol. Just think of a very conservative place that's Saudi Arabia. Like, there's no alcohol, you can't eat pork, you can't party, you can't even watch the movies in the cinema. You have to go to another country, which is Bahrain, to just be able to, like, watch the new movie. That kind of sucked. And so, like, when I got here, admittedly, like, where I was most culture shocked with was that apparently drinking is a normal thing. <laughs> At first, I mean, I have to admit, I was judging everyone. I was like, oh my god, she'd be drinking. Like, that's, that's, that's a sin. That's low-key illegal, but apparently it's not. Like, it's a normal thing. And I actually hated myself so much just remembering that because I was ju literally judging everyone in my head, which like, no, no, I can drink. And so I did. A lot. I think my first and second year, I was 
pretty wild. Like I went all out, I wanted to experience it. And the third year, fourth year, you know, I kind of just grew out of it. I just wanted to experience it really. Oh my god, the discount price, like in <laughs> in the malls, I love it so much. Here in the Philippines, they'll offer like sale prices, for example, for like 10% off. So like you can see a price tag that can say like, oh, it was originally 999, now you can get it for like 998. In Saudi Arabia, it's like you can get this initially for 1,000 bucks and then now you can get it for like 200 bucks. Like holy that is a great deal and you just don't feel like you're getting ripped off by capitalism. I grew up in the Filipino community back at home and I think that the main difference is how comfy I can do. Uh, back home, I could just do anything I wanted really. I could not go home and my parents wouldn't worry. But the moment I don't reply to their messages while I'm staying here, I get what, seven, ten missed calls from my mom. So I guess the main difference is actually the safety, how comfy it is, and the things that I can buy, you know, the amount of money that I can spend. How did your schoolmates here in the Philippines react when they found out that you lived in the Middle East? Did they ask any interesting questions? The first question I heard was, Uy, di ba, dun yung, ano, yung mga terrorists? <laughs> yung mga ganun, di ba? Nagtatanong pa nila na, Anong ginagamit mo papunta sa school? Like, kakamel ba ka ba? May mga iba namang questions na medyo true to life. Like, di ba lahat ng mga Arabs dun, gamit nila mga sports car or you know, land cruiser, di ba? Ganun. So like, interesting na alam pala na ibang tao yun. Questions like, Paano ko nasusurvive yung init? Di nila alam naka-aircon naman lahat. <laughs> Kasi yung iba, yung iba na hindi rin nila alam saan yung Qatar. Mostly naman, Alam nila Qatar, like yung richest country. They asked me if there are Filipinos in Abu Dhabi. So I said, yes, there are lots of OFWs. Nag study ka ba sa international school? I said, no, uh, there's Filipino schools there. I think they somehow misjudged me na just because I'm from overseas, parang mala archive. The first thing they asked me was, can you speak Arabic? And then usually I tell them that, yeah, I can, but really I'm just reciting the national. Anthem or like the numbers, I'm like, I don't know. It's one thing though that I regret the Arabic language is such a beautiful language, and I really wish that I learned more of it, especially in school. That's one, and then two, like again with the camels. Do you ride camels to school? I'm like, what? Where did you even get that? Like, Arabs there have like freaking Lamborghinis and Bugattis and whatever. I don't know where that idea came from, but it's very primitive. But it's also very funny. Of all my years in Saudi Arabia, I've never ridden a camel and I wouldn't want to. That shit looked really scary. They're like, it's huge. So, nah. The first question they asked me was, "Why did you come to Tagalog?" Because the first thing that I did, uh, my first week at uni, I didn't speak any Filipino at all, just for the heck of it. They kept on asking me, "What's there? How's life there? The money, the exchange rate, the lifestyle. Is it true that Arabs have so much money? Is it true that they have pet tigers and cheetahs and stuff like that? Is it true that puro ko You know, the common misconceptions and common questions. Have you gotten used to life in the Philippines yet? If you have, how long did it take for you to get used to it? During my first two years, like really, it was a slow motion na pag adjust But for the last two years, I was able to have fun. I got used to commuting around here. Parang mas nag open yung perspective ko. Hindi naman ganon katagal, kasi prior to moving to Qatar, dito na talaga ako nagtagal my whole life. Hindi naman ganon katagal yung adjustment ko. Two years bago ako na sana na mabuhay dito, kasi nung una sobrang hirap talaga. Hindi ko alam paano ako pupunta ng school. Kung hindi pa ako hati, hindi ko alam. <laughs> Tapos pag pauwe, pinapag commute ako. Isang sa kaya lang naman siya pero nihirapan ako nung una hindi ko alam saan ako bababa iniisip ko baka lumampas I guess I'm pretty used to it it only took me about a month the only thing that really bothered me was the commute I remember back when I moved here it only took me an hour to get from my house to my university and now it takes me about three hours to three hours more or less I'm pretty comfy right now I know where to go I know how to do things I feel like it took me at least let's say like two years because it's really not just adjusting to the culture it's also the people and you know like being able to make friends and because I am more of like on the introvert side I found it really hard to make friends but eventually you know I, I, I did make a lot of friends and these friends were actually the ones who helped me progress more or into the Filipino culture and I'm not just saying like daily things like speaking Tagalog better more of like Uy, tara, hain tayo, isaw. like the first time I was here I was like who the f 
would eat pig intestine and then now I'm inviting most of my friends to eat isao as well like most of my foreigner friends I'd say that getting into the street food culture is part of like passing the test as well of the Filipino culture I don't really commute but when I do I'm very proud of it Philippine transportation can be really really hard <laughs> in terms of like directions like oh I know I know places now I know where freaking Taft is I go there every Thursday and I've been to the beaches here in the Philippines, Zambales, Batangas, Valera, these are like beautiful places and I wish like a lot of people could see it, a lot of like tourists could come in and actually see how beautiful the Philippines is, not just for its people but also literally our land resources. What's one of the most important things that you've realized upon finally settling down in the Philippines? I realized na okay rin naman mag-live dito. Okay rin naman yung ibang tao, yung mga friends. Yun, yun yung reason kaya nagustuhan ko rin dito. Stay humble wherever you are. Do not compare kung saan ka nang galing sa kung nasan ka ngayon. Siyempre, all of the countries have their own unique characteristics. You should learn to appreciate them kasi like dun lang yun meron. I I came to realize na kasi before sinabi ko na hindi ko ayaw kong umalis sa Qatar kasi ang ganda ng buhay ko noon doon na ang dami kong kasama doon na kaibigan na doon ko nakuha yung experience na talagang international yung mga taong kasama ko. Nung once na tumira ko dito, parang na-accept ko na na iba talaga pag tumira ka dito na mga kasama mo, mga Pilipino talaga. Ayun ko talagang ka-jive mo eh, ka-vibes mo. Hindi ka tulad doon. Ayun nga, foreign country. It takes time for other people na mag-gets nila kung ano yung sinasabi mo or yung gusto mo iparating. There's really no place like home. Yeah, my experience is like here. Some of my family is here. But I think the fact that most of my childhood and my adolescence was spent back in Bahrain, you know, it's a different feel of comfort. That's the thing that I miss. I mean, I'm comfy here, but every time I fly back, I feel stress free. I have realized a lot of things like Kylie, but there's no one answer to this, really. I guess, like, because I lived here alone, I guess one thing that I realized is that, you know, you can't really adjust to something unless you're willing to do it, unless you really want to. So, meet new friends and build connections, build relationships, definitely because no one else will be able to help you but yourself and also with the guidance of other people. There are things that we think we know but we really don't. The best tool that we have out there to be able to discover things and learn new things is friends. What would you say is the best part of moving to the Philippines? Best part of moving here is, I guess, like personally, freedom. Sa paggagala, there are a lot of things na hindi pa di sa UAE na pwede pala dito. For example, in Abu Dhabi, like you have to have this conservative conscience na you can't wear kita na yung a lot of skin. So here, parang it's understood as it's a tropical country, mainit. So parang it's okay to wear mga maninipis lang. Yung mga experiences. Kasi kakaiba talaga experience dito. <laughs> and yung mga friends ko na sumasama sa akin gumala. Kasi mahilig din ako gumala. What do you mean by kakaiba? Um, kakaiba. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yung mga party, uh, mga gatherings. Nung nag-college na ako dito, marami ako nakilalang tao na iba't ibang interests, iba't ibang mga passion nila. I mean, ganun din naman sa Qatar. Pero dito, kasi Pilipino talaga, nagkakaintindihan kayo. Minsan na uh, sa ibang mga lahi or nationalities, kailangan na pang explain ng maayos yung parang whole context ng isang bagay. Hindi katulad sa Pilipino gets nila kasi dito talaga sila tumira. So, talaga nagkakaintindihan kayo. I get to live alone. And with living alone, you know, there are a lot of repercussions. Mostly, you get to find yourself and discover yourself because, well, you know, it's just you when you get home after work it's just you who has to clean the house with the dishes who has to feed your dog it's just you so the fact that you're living alone it means that the only person that you have really is you at least like for that circumstance i don't know that, that kind of like teaches you a lot of things especially how to be very independent especially the budgeting also like god i learned how to save money which i am very very proud about because before i got i can't even like keep my money in my wallet for like two days and then now I'm like I don't want to say I'm kuri but <laughs> at least I know how to properly spend it. The nightlife experiences, the way that you meet new people, 
the way everything around here it's very interesting every corner everywhere you go there's something new to learn there's always something else if you were given a chance to either move back to the country you lived in or stay in the philippines which would you choose and why? Oh man, um, Jan and Diro Shuri, because now since graduate na ako, mas maraming opportunities din sa Qatar in terms of salary. Pero as of now, talagang masaya ako dito sa Philippines. Dito yung mga kaibigan ko eh. Tsaka, sobrang daming pwedeng gawin dito na hindi pwedeng gawin doon. Tsaka, yung time ko noon, hindi ko alam kung ganun pa rin ngayon. Doon sa Qatar, hindi pa ganun ka progressive yung pag-iisip. May racism pa yung konti eh. Tapos may sexism pa. Pero dito, kay third world country, pero ganun talaga na kakaintindihan. So, I answer that question, I would rather live here. I would choose pa rin na go back to the country I lived in, Qatar. Sanina kasi ako doon, hindi tulad yung ibang tao kasi diba pag dito lang, sabi nila, kinakabahan sila umalis ng Philippines diba pag sanay dito. Pero ako, mas gusto ko sa Qatar kasi in terms of comfort, mas comfortable talaga doon kesa dito. Tsaka dito kasi mainit tapos minsan wala pang aircon. <laughs> Tsaka yung commute dito, mahirap din. Sa Qatar kasi, recently nga may train sila doon. Pero kahit wala naman yung train, Okay pa rin naman doon. Nabuhay ako sa taxi. <laughs> After all my experience here and also yung after going back sa Abu Dhabi, I think I would most likely go back to Abu Dhabi. Kasi that's where I'm most comfortable with. That's where my heart is. You know, the feeling of being at home. The feeling of being accepted. There. I'll definitely stay in the Philippines. In terms of culture, in terms of how progressive we are becoming, we're a developing country and that's what I look forward to the most. You know, we're not stoic. I mean, there are a lot of things that's wrong with our government, especially with our society. But you know, it's things like social issues, like for example, where you could even see it like online, like how very aware, woke people are um, about like, let's say gender equality and you know, like they're fighting against the government and they're practicing their freedom of speech and the youth now is, you know, as Jose Rizal did say, they are the future. You know, that sounds very cliche and cheesy to some people, but I really believe in that. So it's also things like just really being able to support your own country. Like let's say as simple as working here, which is honestly like that's the reason why I'm working here right now is because I want to give back to my fellow people. Like if I were to pay taxes, might as well pay the government for it. Be able to provide for the projects that they have for the Philippines. That is if they're not corrupting it. So <laughs> that's how I take on it. I'd rather be here in the Philippines. There's so much to see and there's more to it than what people think. There's more to it than just the surface level and given it a choice. Although I have learned the Arab culture pretty well as well, I'd rather stay here in the Philippines. It will always be my first choice. Neither. I wouldn't want to go back to Bahrain to stay there and work there. Probably visit it every once in a while. I wouldn't want to stay here in the Philippines either for obvious reasons. So yeah, it's, it's really neither. I would want to find somewhere else to live. I want to experience something else. I don't want to be stuck in one place for the rest of my life without completely having my own adventure. Wait! I love shawarma and I love kabsa and god like I love the corniche of Saudi Arabia I love roasted chicken and all these things gosh but nothing can ever top Esau <laughs>